tens don't exist. Yeah, Chloe. what is no, this ten? Jake always tells exist. you I'm an eight, and I'm like, can you just bump me up one? <laughs> Chloe, uh, Chloe. Uh, boy, yeah. rig, I know, rig right? eight, chat well, five. So it takes it out. You know, it's actually rig, rig nine and a half to ten, chat five. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 8 of Couples Quarantine. I'm Jace Haskell. I'm Chloe Maidley. And we're joined by a couple of absolute keynotes today. Oh, uh, very <laughs> close starts. friends of, of both of ours. My very best friend, some say my only friend, uh, and his beautiful <laughs> wife. It's Paul Doran Jones and Zoe Harbin, or Zoe Doran Jones, or Paul Hardman. Where it's a very modern relationship we're going on. How are you guys? We're good. It depends what day of the week, doesn't it? We go with those names. But yeah, yeah, I sort of select it, handpick it. Like if I, if I want him to be really, really like chuffed and feeling a bit of like the big boy, I say, hello, it's Zoe Doran Jones on the phone. Yes, yeah. so I like that. Yeah. But yeah. then when I'm trying to be showbiz, it's Zoe Hardman. Yeah, so I do the a... same. And he gets so angry with me. I'm like, Chloe Maidley. He's like, you're not Maidley, you're Haskell. I'm like, no, not today. To explain why, 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 why it gets, I get a bit stressed because I go into a restaurant and I go, uh, got a reservation. And I go, was it uh, Mr. Haskell? It's like, yeah, yeah, James Haskell. Like, no, I can't find it here. It's like, might have had a Chloe Haskell. Like, no, Chloe Maidley. I'm like, for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Fuck sakes. Okay. I know. That gets it's the it. reservation though, James, doesn't it? Well, this is the thing. He seems to think that because he's an England rugby player, he can get in everywhere. And I'm like, my parents have a lot of connections too, and I have their names. So <laughs> yeah, really, she, she's it's a basically free for. helping me out, but we don't want to admit that, you know. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, I don't know if you guys have seen anything of um, couples quarantine. Now, it, it you might have seen some of the clips where I think say things like finger blasting and lads will bang anything. It's not what the show's about. It's essentially. First, we, we talk about all things sort of relationships, couples, sex, dynamics, all the bits and pieces that go with it. Um, and obviously you guys are, for me, a very inspirational couple. Mm. Um, you have a fantastic marriage. Your parents have three wonderful children. Do you want to tell us nice. how, yeah, you, nice. ha, how, you, how you met to start with? Because, Dos, you've already had it. Well, may you tell your story about how you, what your setup was? Who wants to lead this off? I think you, you I think tell the short off. version. Though. Shortened version. Okay, so... Um, I had obviously um, come out of a, a previous relationship um, of which I had my el my eldest daughter, Isla, um, who is seven. I'd recently broken up with her mum and um, I was sleeping on your couch, I think, James. And I was at the bottom of a probably my third or fourth bottle of uh, wine, probably, and feeling pretty sorry for myself. And James sort of tapped me on the shoulder and was like, come on, Dos, fuck. He was like, for fuck's sake. He was like, you know, he was like, we're going out tonight. He was like, you know, scrape yourself together, put something nice on. Um, we're going out to our mate's book launch, okay? Put a fancy dress on. Put a fancy yeah. frock on. Let's go out. Wash your gash and... Uh, <laughs> trim your butt, trim your bits. Actually, we are going to do a show on, on manscaping because I, if I remember rightly, Paul, you weren't a massive fan of that or management of it wasn't great. Well, no, let time. him it, tell the story first. Let right, me tell sorry. the story. We can go back to manscaping because I've, you know, I've got definitely a different approach to you because you're like a human cue ball. But look, and, and so anyway, I scraped myself together and we were heading out to, to a book launch. A friend of ours had written a book launch, uh, written a book. I didn't ask really where it was, but I wasn't too happy about it. Anyway, James and I used to run this thing called The Policy that um, we had a single men in. It was basically, if we saw anybody attractive and we mentioned it to the other party, then we had to go up and speak to them and, and sort of stop them and just try and chat to them. Um, it was nothing more than just kind of a conversational tool, really, to get yourself out there and talking to people. Anyway, as we're walking into this venue, which happened to be the Playboy Club in London, um, <laughs> has goes like lots that. Lots of shit went down there. Yeah, lots of, yeah, which, which we, you know. Not on that night. Though. Not on that night, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> has sort of whispers in my ear as we go in, he goes, policies and action does. And I was like, don't be so daft. Don't be so, you know, ridiculous. I'm not running the policy. He goes, no, 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 rules are rules, kid. Get yourself, you know, get yourself <laughs> on your bike sort of thing. Anyway, we go into this place and I'm still feeling sorry, like bolt uprights, kind of trying to sip this drink to get myself into into any sort of mood. And suddenly, I just sort of cast eyes across the room on this it's a, incredible looking beauty. That's and then sat Zoe was next to it. <laughs> yeah, you, was Zoe, and then, was Zoe behind her? Did she move that <laughs> away? <laughs> I got that in there before you did. I saw you, Hask, and I was like a little Kino, like... Hiya! Hiya! <laughs> and like, looking at Hass wearing like some sort of mesh 
neon oh. vest. Yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. Night. We're, we're going to come. What the fuck oh. is he wearing? We're going to come Frank. onto his dress sense surely. But sure. um, anyway, and Has goes. Oh, and I said, oh my god, you know? And he goes, yeah, it's hard. And I said. Oh, I said, wow, look at her. I said, she is incredible. And he goes, mate, policy. He goes, policy. And I went, don't be so ridiculous. I said, I've got nothing to say. I said, don't, don't wear, do what you're thinking. Anyway, James had already set off and started meandering across the room um, to, to speak to Zoe. And I was sort of tagging along, just like skulking in behind, thinking, oh my God, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Yeah, and I'd like to just interject here that I was actually with my boyfriend at the time. <laughs> Hello to Adam, if you're watching. Adam, like, you were great. We had a great time. And yeah. nothing happened that night, <laughs> FYI. Cheers, but I Adam. Was, I was in this relationship and, and you know, it wasn't going particularly well at the time, I don't think. And But Adam was right there. So when, when Hask and Doz came over, he was like that. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And I would be. Yeah, if I was yeah. the guy and these two yeah. would over, I'd be like, sit down, <laughs> sit yeah. down right now. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, and so so Zoe, Zoe and I had this conversation and, you know, one of Zoe's, like, absolute strengths is she gets right to it, right? And she yeah. somehow extracts the kind of the nuts and bolts out of any conversation in kind of, in terms of emotion and look as yeah. a as a, as a, as an alpha male I'm probably that's one of my weaknesses I suppose uh, is 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 kind of conveying those and letting them out anyway we had this like really powerful conversation I literally was mesmerized and then she suddenly hit me with the bombshell and she said and I was like well, but what about you and she said well I'm moving in with with um with my boyfriend or I've moved in with my boyfriend or whatever it was. And she said, and this is him. And she introduced me to her boyfriend and he was like a six foot three, <laughs> gorgeous looking bloke. And I remember looking up, sort of shaky his hand, but still try- <laughs> transfixed on Zoe. And in Zoe my mind, I was like, tells me that Fuck. you were not intimidated by anyone, oh, Dodger. I know cer- you. Certainly not intimidated, but I was just like, ah, oh, crestfallen. Cause I was like, <laughs> this is my, you know, and then, I've managed to pull it back round because I just said like, oh, I don't want to meet another woman at this moment. But Zoe said to me, had asked me one of her questions was what, you know, what's going on? And I had told her about, um, <laughs> Sorry, I told her about this, you know, my situation with Isla and her mum and that I, you know, was recently, you know, going through that breakup. And she said, well, what are you looking for now? And I said, to be honest, I'm kind of done with, done with women. I'm, I'm going to live the single, the good life and just be a dad and told her all about my daughter and whatever. Anyway, she said, well, what are you looking for in terms of your next your next sort of date and partner? And I said, well, I'm not really sure. And she goes, what you want is a filthy nine. No, you said to me, <laughs> I'm only going, that's not right. He said, I'm Thank only you. going for tens. And I said, that's a shame. And he said, why? And I said, what you really want is a filthy nine. And he went, is yeah. that you? And I went, yes, it is. <laughs> that's what yes, it was. Sir. I'm yes, only sir, going for tens. That yeah, was his leading to that. So would... And by the way, here's my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, but you can't I'm... deny it when that chemistry is there. And especially given that you guys have now ended up married with two kids. Same thing happened to my parents. They were both married when they met. And it just was what it was. Like it, it just yeah. It, it had well, to happen. I think she lied. She lied to me because you know she had, she said she was a filthy nine. She's actually a filthy nine point five. <laughs> I would go um, as far so, as to say filthy temple. Yeah, five. filthy. Well, no, Thanks, we don't do Chloe. tens. We don't do Shop tens. We do tens. Don't, tens don't exist. Yeah, Chloe. what is no, this? Ten, James tens always tens tells exist. you I'm an eight, and I'm like, can you just bump me up one? <laughs> Chloe, uh, Chloe. Uh, yeah. Boy, yeah. Rig, know, rig really. eight, chat well, five. So it takes it down. You know, essentially, rig, rig nine and a half to ten, chat five. It brings you down. It's uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. It's it's, I don't like. I think. I think the thing is. I think Chloe, you just said that. That sometimes you meet somebody. It doesn't happen very often. I actually didn't. Didn't even ever experience it before I met him. And I think sometimes it it rocks the plans because it. I literally was a week away from moving in with Adam, and I did yeah. move in with him, but very quickly I'd within you nothing. We didn't hadn't unpack. had any communication. I unpacked my thousands of shoes, and he was like. Fucking hell. <laughs> Time to um, leave. <laughs> but by the October, I was out. So it was April to October, I'd, I'd left. So I think, like you said with your parents, I think sometimes you meet somebody and there is that clash and that bang and you're, you you have to go for it. We do. Yeah, it just, but I remember meeting, so I met Doors um, just before he met you, like just before. And yeah, you were, you were not in a good place, kiddo. You were like, you were upset, you were sad. It was all over your face. And then I remember meeting you again post- me you meeting Zoe and you were like I mean bouncing off the walls it was just so obvious everything changed so quickly and I was saying to James one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is you got in there quick I feel like 
you, I met you, you were single, and then re-met you, you were with Zoe, and then you were married, and now you have two kids together, and obviously Isla. Um, and I was like, I, I want to ask you, like, was that intentional that you just like got through it, or did it just happen like that? I think the thing was was that we we knew we uh, almost immediately we knew we wanted to have kids together, and that is and that was probably driven by the fact that Doz was Doz was already a dad, and he had yeah. Isla, and you know suddenly I was a stepmom, or you know almost three weeks after meeting him, you know Isla was around all the time, and it was just magical. But I never really wanted to have kids before I met Doz, and then I saw him with Isla. And everything changed, and that that was a weird, you know, he, he he very much was like, she is the most important thing in my life. It's not a competition mm-hmm. between you and her, but if you want to come on this ride with us, you've got to get on. So We're a package I just jumped, deal. I just jumped yeah. on board. It was fucking brilliant. And, and you said, and you said because of the way you saw Paul with Isla, you knew straight away. Because I think, for example, with Chloe and I, we don't we don't have kids. We you know we talk about kids, but. For example, I know if I pick up a baby or she sees me with Isla or something like that, you know, and I vice versa, you sort of see what you're like with kids and how and how you are, and you see it as, as, as a good quality. You know, obviously, when you know we, we have told this story on the podcast I did with Paul the other day, but when fi- first Isla came around, I love kids, but when they like can't interact, I sort of treat them as like little dogs. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> Isla was there, and I was like, Isla, Isla, come over here, like, and, yeah, yeah. And Paul, Paul was like. Don't, Don't do whistle that. at my daughter. Like, she's not a dog. And I was like, I was, I sorry. She's gobsmacked. Yeah. He was like, I can't I was like, do that. Don't, no, no, no. But, but, no, no. But, do yeah, Don't do that. But what I wanted to know was, was that really what opened your kind of heart up and thought, Christ, he's a great dad already. Imagine what he's like when he's got my kids. Yeah. I mean, obviously, initially, it was because he's so fit. <laughs> And I'm a sucker for a beautiful face and a fucking massive ass. And like the, the thighs on him. I thought she was going to say massive dick then, but no. <laughs> then she wouldn't be like, can't lie. Then she like, no. no. Also, I'm a mother, so I can't lie about it. So God. obviously, like this was the appeal, but then, and these, and you know, and then he had a bit of chat. So that was kind of like, oh, this is great. Um, and then I saw him with Isla and I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm in trouble here because he's just the most incredible father. And I knew instantly that, I, that this, you know, he was the person. It was really, really quick for us. It happened very, very, very quickly, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, our, our relationship went from zero to 100. Once you came around the first time, you sort of didn't really ever leave, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and we obviously I'd been through it and we had said, we had the conversation. We're like, look, I've already got, a, we've already got Isla. So let's not, we don't want to hang around either. Let, let's start looking into it. Let's have a think about it. It wasn't sort of, you know, reckless. I, I had feelings to Zoe that I'd never had and, you know, Oh, never, it's evidently never not reckless. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, never, it wasn't we've never, known No, it years. wasn't. Never experienced it before. But, but you know, and then we we kind of had, you know, you've had, you've had issues of fertility in the family and we had that whole conversation. Yeah. yeah. And it really sped things up for us in yeah. that sense as well. It kind of brought it to the fore. When we met in the, well, when we finally had that date in the February of 2015, and then over the course of the next six months, my sister very, very sadly discovered that she was going through early menopause and she was only 33 at the time. So she was oh. married, came off the pill, tried for a baby and and had these horrendous, horrendous symptoms. It then transpired that it was hereditary, that my granny had gone through it, my mum had gone through it. So it was almost like a ticking time bomb. I've spoken about this before, but yeah. Dozer yeah. was incredible at that moment. Because obviously, how do you say to a person that you've only been dating for six months? Oh, I thing think is, right, is kids. that um, probably, probably not going to be able to have kids for, for very much longer. Like, we need to go for it. Mm. He was amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. I tried to freeze my eggs, couldn't get any... And then he just said, well, how about we just try naturally? That was in the October and we were pregnant by the January. Those fucking doctors, a... by the way. I know. Well, Those fucking doctors, because the doctor was like, you're not going to, it's not going to happen gonna naturally. Happen naturally. <laughs> and I was like, well, we can practice. I was like, we could definitely try. I said, let's just give it a go. Thinking, okay, well, we'll get a load of practice in. And, but, you know. And we did. Maybe we'll just and we did. Like, and we did. <laughs> we're still practicing are... now. Because I got a phone call, actually. I got a phone call when Dottie, because I checked in with Doz. I was like, Doz, how are you? You know, how's things going with Zoe? He's like, really good, yeah. And then obviously told me a bit about the situation and was like, you know, we're, we're, you know, obviously we're, we're thinking about kids. There isn't a lot of time. And I was like, luckily I fucking know Zoe because I've heard a few stories in my time of like girls trying it on. But the whole early menopause thing, I was like, fuck, I didn't, obviously didn't know a lot about it then. I was like, Doss, if it was anybody else, I'd say run a fucking thousand miles. But Zoe never, you know, does not strike me as the kind of girl that's going to pull no, that no, story out of the bag. And then, and then, and I said, Doss, is I going to try? And then I think about 
I don't know, it must have been two months later, she gets a call because we're having a kid. I was like, fucking hell, you yeah. two do not mess around. And but can I just interesting- say as well, for the record, all the, all the women listening, and we have a fair few, Zoe pregnant is what everybody wants to look like yeah, pregnant. Yeah. Like, I remember, where were we? Were we in Ibiza? Oh, God, I didn't where think were so, we? but yeah, I love you for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were in Mallorca, Mallorca weren't we? At Mallorca. Mallorca. Wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were, you, you had your back to us, and I was like, She's fit, because that's how I think, obviously. <laughs> and then turned, and I was like, oh my God, it's Zoe, and she is so <laughs> pregnant, and you looked unbelievable, like glamorous, yeah, great tits, great body. I was just like, that's oh my God, I the tits. Like pregnant. Well, I lo- thanks amazing. for saying that. The tits that were amazing. the only good thing about it, if I'm honest, and I was obsessed with them, right? And I was <laughs> just taking photographs of my tits every fucking All hour day. throughout the day <laughs> just like what about this angle what about this angle like i was even tempted to put various fruit you know just that just to, yeah. i'd never had i could i could keep anything in between like, my boots motivate me motivate, you motivate me. me you certainly yeah. put one things in between them didn't you <laughs> oh, don't, don't, be don't, vulgar. Oh, don't we, we said be vulgar yeah people should know that both zoe and i have said to james and doris before we did this like don't make it laddie we want to have yes. a proper conversation I, paul I, what yeah. i'm interested to ask as a single man dating with a kid, what was that like? And, 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 and was it really hard? Was it easy? Did you did you bring Isla into the conversation um, right the early or did you pretend you didn't have kids? I'm interested to know. It changed the whole focus of it in, in reality. I, I suppose that you've kind of, you've got a responsibility behind you, behind you. It's not just mindlessly going out there and, you know, dating, which is what I probably used to do back in the day as a single man. Um, you know, I, I, I did try and get it out there as soon as possible because I didn't want to waste my time with people who couldn't see couldn't see my situation as a positive. And it was and look, I, I accept it wasn't a positive for everybody. And, you know, I, I get that. But I wanted to be upfront and honest about it. And just so I used to put it out there really early on, and just be like, look, this is my situation. Um, I don't see it as a negative like it's the making of me. And it really has been the making of me as a person. Um so, so, so I really tried to put it out there early. Did you used to, I mean, what, what were your sort of views on introducing women to Isla? Or did you have to wait until you were kind of in a serious relationship with them before you introduced her? Yeah, I think, I, I, look, I didn't, I didn't want to get into a situation where I was introducing her to lots of women and I didn't. Um, you know, and I didn't want her seeing me with lots of different women because she was so young. Because you weren't. Because I wasn't. <laughs> Because right? you were a virgin, apart from that one time you had Isla. <laughs> it's actually clever. Because right? there was the weird thing was that Isla, how did I like get introduced? She used to just high five on the way out. Cheers, love. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Be Cheers, mate. You. Sana. Up Sana. Up. Sana. To the side, yeah, down below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids in it. Too slow. Yeah, and you're out the too door. slow. Out your door. <laughs> out you go. Um, out you go. Do you Paul, know what's Paul. so funny? Oh, sorry, Carol. Oh, no, you're I just, on. Yeah, I just want to ask. So, so if you were, would there any advice you would give to single dads out there, like mm. a couple of your tips on how and how to best handle it, because I know, especially if you, if you know if you've just separated, I know each parent gets funny about when you introduce new people, and it can always, always be a point of argument. I remember hearing it from yourself and different people. It's like, what do you mean you've, you've introduced them to so and so, or you know, yeah. I know that can be quite hard. But do you have any tips for for people listening as to what you know what what, what they should do and shouldn't do? <laughs> I think I think from my point of view, you've got to own it because you know that situation is not going away. Yeah. And what you don't want to do is get halfway down the track with somebody, f- generate feelings, or kind of find that you've got something there, and then tell them and sort of de- drop drop a bombshell, and then suddenly you know it causes an absolute rift. I think you've got to own it. You are you know you're in that situation. That's not anything to be ashamed of. You're not doing your your, your, your child a disservice you're not doing anybody a disservice you know in fact you're actually doing yourself your, your child the, you're doing the right thing by your child in trying to find happiness and a kind of a stable relationship so mm-hmm. look, and anybody who doesn't see that I think for me it was so important that that was a defining thing in, in any potential relationship and I was happy to cast off anybody on that point of view and you know I was really lucky I, I met Zoe and you know, we had a conversation uh, very, very early, yeah. if not instantaneously. And so Zoe knew my situation and then, and she was so forthcoming and just loved it. And look, I just, I sort of drip fed her in as, as we got more serious. And look, that happened very quickly for me because as I say, I saw her, took one look at Zoe and I, knew, and I kind of had this feeling, it yeah. sounds ridiculous, but it's not, it's the truth. And um, 
I, I, so I knew, and it was all about trying to manage that as as best I could. And but you know, ultimately, so he came to stay one night, and Isla was in bed asleep, and I was thinking, "Well, I sleep through." And Isla ended used to end up in my bed the whole time. So it, you know, all, all best laid plans went out the window, and and yeah. and Isla yeah. and Zoe met in the middle of the night and kind of Aww. looking at each other, going, you know, "Who's Hi. this cat in my bed?" <laughs> and also to any sort of people that are listening that have just started dating somebody with a child. So on the flip side of that. Because actually sometimes for the step parent or the new person that comes in and their new partner has a child, it's sometimes quite difficult. And I think we get I get a load of questions like, how do you build that relationship with your stepchild? You know, it's a disaster this end. I think you've got to take competition out of it because you Mm. cannot try and compete and you shouldn't want to and you shouldn't need to try and compete with the with your with your new boyfriend or girlfriend and their child and yeah. the love is completely separate and different and I think the more you put in the more you get back from that child like my it's almost easier to parent Isla than it is to parent our own children together because yeah. her and I are just yeah, I mean best the best of friends but also oh, yeah. we have this real respect for one another and the love is equal you know, it, for yeah. all of them. But it also, it's very tough for you at times because I think, you know, for Zoe, because she has been there since I was been sort of six, eight months, 10 months, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and, um, and, you know, but she always, obviously, she has a, has a mum as well. And so if there's ever kind of an accolade at school, it's like she probably goes to her mum first. And, does, and, yeah. and, and uh, as, as you would expect. But so that probably is quite a tough thing to deal with. But at the same time, for me, it's so, um, I can't tell you how comforting it is. And the peace of mind it gives me, the relationship that they have is just, uh, in, you know, it's hard to put words on it really because yeah. it's so powerful. She's so lucky because look, sometimes you have a relationship you have with your mom or a relationship you have with your dad. You can't necessarily share certain things. Yeah. So, so me and Isla have got this kind of unique best friendy mother figure you know it's yeah. like it's an amazing special relationship and she's so lucky to have it they're both so lucky to have it and I that's the most it. comforting I thing for me i saw it on sunday like isla you can see that you're really 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 close friends like uh, like that was it's just so obvious isla will give zoe something or ask zoe something and they talk to each other like they're best mates like almost like a like sisters in a way but then Zoe is also very maternal with her, which is just, it's so Mm -hmm. sweet. And it's so, the flip is so quick. So at the end, Isla was obviously tired and she was crying about something. And Zoe was like, okay, we're going to get in the car because you're tired (laughs) and we need to leave. Kind of scooped her up, gave her a cuddle and they were out. And I was like, it's such an amazing bond that you have. And you can absolutely see that respect there. And I also think, yeah, in terms of not being her, you know, actual biological mother, of course, the, the, beauty of the fact that it's you Zoe and I've known you for years now is that you are quite a strong feminist and you have nothing but the utmost respect for women women who work women who are mothers Mm. and it is I'm sorry but it is kind of um it, whoever whoever it is that gets you as the stepmom is very lucky because you ain't treading on any toes, but you're, you're a force to be reckoned with yourself. And it, re- it reminds me when my mum and dad met again and my mum had the twins, Tom and Dan, who were seven then. And she said to my dad, look, we're a package deal. It's not a competition. It's me and them. Mm-hmm. It's not them and you, it's me and them. And it and, and my dad said exactly what you said, Zoe, that he didn't want kids. And then he saw her with them. He started a relationship with them and he was like, that's it, I'm in, I want kids. Um, yeah. It's amazing. And I wanted to ask you, Zoe, much like Do- um, James just asked Doza, when, you, when he first said, I have a daughter, or when you realized that actually you were gonna get into a relationship with him, were you intimidated or were you like just excited or indifferent? How did you feel about the whole thing? I don't think I realized the sort of magnitude of it, actually, if I'm honest, because yeah. I was a bit, you know, at the beginning, um, you get a bit bamboozled with like, yeah. the lust <laughs> yeah. and you're like having all this great sex and hanging yeah. out and going on these amazing dates and he was picking me up in his flashy car and I was like oh fuck <laughs> you know. probably borrowed my car Zoe to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like like any like any any person gets a bit like it was just this really lovely romance that was happening and yeah. but then there was a very 
wonderful grounding serious tone to it which was the fact that yeah. um, Dozer was raising a daughter and there were these moments where yeah we would do all of that but then we would be at home with Isla where we were rolling around on the ground or doing messy play outside potty or training potty training her or yeah. uh, you know messy play no doubt <laughs> messy exactly the type you know oh, really? so, um, you, so you, were, you were involved in all the potty training as well so you've because I forgot I, the oh, timeline yeah. things happen because kids grow up so we don't see him for ages. Like Isla, you know, she's just turned into she's my, she's my obviously my goddaughter. She wasn't that best pleased with me because she I threw her in the pool. <laughs> she got a bit upset. So James, I've James, James is stronger than furious. he realizes. She's furious. Yeah, she yeah she's, she's furious. Really angry. She was really, but I've apologised. and said I love you. I said I'm sorry. Are you still upset with me? She was like no. But I heard that went, and it was very cute. Yeah, but then, and then I walked past. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And like, she, I, then she headbutted you. Then in she the face, no me. Joke. Like, she, I go, Do you want to give me a kiss? She went yeah. Just head butt me on the nose. Like, <laughs> um, but no, but I forgot that you, you were involved in the potty, potty training as well. So, do you find that quite a good precursor to two other kids? You think, you know, did you have the same when you have a, when you have a new kid? It's like uh, you know, apparently you're rushing around. But obviously, Paul, it was Paul's second child. But you'd sort of gone through some of it to start with. Did that make it easier for you, Absolutely. or was it a good practice, Absolutely, or were you yeah. still like shit? I'm I'm a new mum. Yeah, it's very different. But I mean, obviously, Isla taught me how to be a mother. Like, let's just break that down. I'll always tell her that when she gets older, because she's the one that kind of gave me the legs to make the mistakes. Like, I remember we'd gone down to stay with her, like my second parents down in East Sussex. And we'd gone down to stay with them for the weekend. And Isla was there. And and this was the weekend that I was going to tell Doz that I loved him as well. So in my head, I was like, this is fucking massive. What a geek I am. so Isle is there and we're like all sitting, you know, round outside and she's like, done a poo. And I was like, oh, I'm going to change you. Brilliant. Excellent. So we like went upstairs, changed, having a real giggle, came downstairs in front of everybody. And I was like, just changed Isla. And the dozer was like, oh, great. G- great. Good one. And everyone was like, great. And then Dozer was like, come on, Isla, and took her off. And I was like, what's wrong? And Ali went, got the nappy on backwards. I was like, oh shit. Fuck, yeah, fuck that one up. And I was like, oh, this is devastating. This is not going to plan. Ruined um, it. <laughs> ruined it. So obviously I got to do all of those things with her. Um, yeah. But then, it, when it, you know, then when you actually have to physically like push a child out and go through all of the physical stuff that happens. And actually I wasn't there for the newborn stage. So he was amazing, very calm, but also didn't tell me how to do it, if that makes sense. We figured yeah. out a new way together. It, you know, and, he was amazing. And I think that's really important is, it, is each child is different. And James, like you're flapping, whether you've had, you know, whether it's your fourth kid, fifth kid, each one is like, you forget how to do it very quickly, don't you? Like I was holding yeah. a newborn the other day and I was like, you know, yeah. fumbling around. And it's like, you know, I don't say, bloody hell, I've forgotten, I've forgotten how to hold it. Because my youngest now is like a little lump. Kid, you know, he is a lump. He is going to do and... some damage. He, I think he'll be a rugby player. No, I mean, <laughs> damage rugby pitch. Wait, rugby yeah. pitch. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's also extremely beautiful because he kind of he looks is. like Zoe with Doz's body. And I'm like, uh oh, you are in trouble. <laughs> uh, this, the this prawn? Is trouble. The prawn. The prawn. No, um, he. So I kind of, I'm quite envious. It's obviously, James and I are like, we really we really haven't made the decision and we go back and forth all the time. I'm quite envious that it was quite, kind of like, an easy decision for you, Dozza, because you already had Isla, and kind of a non-negotiable for you, Zoe, because you had, yeah. you know, a genetic history of, of, you know, needing to have kids on a real timeline. And I feel like we don't have that but, kind of deciding factor. And if we did, it would just be so much easier. Um, I yeah. just want to say that I would never have had children with Dozza, regardless of the of the hereditary condition. I would never have had a child with him had I not known in my heart of hearts and known that, that it was a hundred percent the right decision because. That is just not what I'm about. I would rather have had no children than yeah, have children sure. with the wrong person. You yeah. know, that is absolutely key, I, I think, f- f- absolutely. Because I think a lot of people think they can have a child to sort out a relationship. And for us, yeah. it's like, it stretches you to the fucking yeah, limits. And past, yeah, and, and past, past at times, doesn't it? And and I think that's, that's it. And I think the, look, the interesting thing was, or the kind of unique thing was that we obviously had Isla, had our next kids, and so haven't had an awful lot of time as certainly not as a married couple for ourselves. Like we haven't done the, you know, getting steaming, waking up in the morning, sleeping all day, eating shit. You, you know, we haven't done, we can't do any of that. Yeah. Everything we do is, has been based around the fact that we are a family unit and that, that, 
you know that dictates our life we're we're quite looking forward to it. we're quite happy at the moment <laughs> yes. like we're getting we're getting to our stages like we've, we've got rid of all the prams now we've got rid of all the you know all the other bits and pieces certain toys are getting out of the house um you know and and hopefully we'll be out of nappy soon where oh, kids yeah. nearly out of them and so it's like little wins where we're like fuck we're so yeah. close one step closer to freedom yeah. <laughs> but you'll miss school. it like, you know, you'll miss it when you we, don't we're have getting a baby. there and we're really looking forward to that time where we can say right it's back to us a little bit yeah. now because um, we never had it because we never got, really had it yeah. but. so I've got a question obviously because you know when, the, 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 when you talked at the start of the podcast obviously about you had a real uh, relationship of passion uh, obviously sex and stuff is very important to, to you guys with three kids, uh, how do you manage to do that? How does that even work? Oh, well, hang on, wait. Oh, don't, sorry. Don't answer that yet because we actually, this is a question from a listener who's asked to remain anonymous and James and I can't answer it because we don't have kids. So I'll read the question, which ties in exactly to what okay, you just asked. Sweet. Okay, so, hi, Chloe and James. My wife and I have been together for 12 years now. We have four children. Whereas that might sound like we have a healthy sex life, it couldn't be further from the truth. My wife is now totally insecure about her body and the way that she looks. Oh Admittedly, we're both hardworking and tired a lot of the time, but in truth, I think she just doesn't love herself anymore. No matter how many compliments I give her, and frankly, sometimes I couldn't care less how she looks, I never managed to convince her to make love or even have a quickie. <laughs> I think we've had sex twice in the last year. I love my wife, oh my I love my children, God. but I really need this physical relationship back. Life is pretty cold for me. I'd prefer we remain anonymous um, without being gushy. I love Chloe and Hast's dynamic. Okay, <laughs> ignore the last bit, but you get the question. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys, thoughts, advice to this guy? Yeah, I mean, can I start that off? Go on, please. Because mm. you know what? We talk about this um, a lot on Made by Mamas, which is obviously the the parenting blog and podcast that we have yeah it's amazing and everybody listen to it thank you chloe and <laughs> this is very common a lot of women message us saying that they've completely lost everything about themselves and i think we're we'll, we'll speaking to this guy you know your wife has had four children and every time you have a child it takes a really long time to find yourself again and you spend all of your days you know wiping faces and obviously men do this too a hundred percent they do and it should be very equal and i'm not sure what their working dynamic is like but if she has been at home with them and she's been doing that from fucking six o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock at night there isn't much time left for her so i think as much as you can he's saying that he's building up her confidence and you know trying to make her feel great about herself obviously that has to come from her um i think the more sex you have if you get back on the horse it encourages more sex i think I a very good tip is to for him to maybe say to her listen tonight i'm going to run us a bath i'm going to get the candles on we're going to have a glass of champagne in the bath the kids are in bed asleep and we're just going to do this for us we sometimes do that and that is like it feels like a fucking spa hotel yeah um i think also like taking it outside of the bedroom if you have your kids with you in bed sometimes having sex in bed can be the least sexiest thing that you could yeah. ever want to do like sometimes we'll have sex in the laundry room in like the kids are watching peppa pig and the space of an episode <laughs> we've managed to climax so like <laughs> you, I so, I I certainly have, you certainly have yeah um, i think in the space re- of one ad <laughs> Oh, one minute and 24 one minute. seconds yeah, yeah. That's my record at the minute. <laughs> one yeah. minute man um, yeah so that's I think great. As, as much as you can just really try and mix it up and try and encourage for sex to be sexy again but obviously for her she's just got to get over the hurdle and i think that has got to yeah he's got to do something extraordinary to make that happen at this point yeah and i think and i think you know from from my perspective on that is like is knowing and understanding that 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 kind of emotional stuff is going on all behind it all i think for a guy you know you you've you kind of your success is on getting a shag basically and you're <laughs> you're basically trying to get you know and it's almost like it knocks you a little bit if you don't quite get there but you know the the bar sometimes if it, the intimacy side can easily fall out of the relationship yeah, yeah and i think that you you know by having a bath having a kiss having a cuddle doesn't always have to lead to sex and i you know i have to listen to this myself sometimes because yeah. look you've got su- such a big world when you've got one kid let alone four kids let alone yeah. 12 years married like it's it's a big you yeah. know it's a big thing and you've got to just keep reinventing that but also um the one thing I would say is Zoe's completely right is that 
you can't it's very difficult with that you know with that all going on to schedule it in it or to even think about it at the end of the day because you get into bed and you fall into bed and literally all you want to do is sleep so it's like finding that minute in the day finding that little bit of romance or that little bit of intimacy making them laugh trying to reassure trying to you know tell them you love them all those things are you beautiful it's just kind of constantly reminding those i like your shoes you look great in that whatever it is you know don't underestimate (laughs) how how those little things add up you know add up and also yeah sorry james just very 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 quickly um there's a really amazing guy called dr anand patel and he talks about all the senses around sex. So some women don't want to have penetrative sex after they've had children. It's It hurts, it's uncomfortable, a baby's come out of their vagina, they just don't find that area. But you can have sex without having penetrative sex. So Or in the you ass, can, just... can you know? <laughs> Shane, stop talking about the ass now. It's never the ass. What's the ass with you, Jeff? Just saying. I'm just saying. It's 2020. Every episode, he, he brings it right back around to Aino. Every time. Every single time. Straight back to Aino. Yeah, yeah, like Anand Anand Patel. Patel. Dr. Anand sorry. Patel, find yeah. him, listen to his podcast. He's fucking brilliant. No, but sorry, sorry, I, inter- I interrupted you because I was being an idiot. So you said about <laughs> the, 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 no, other other things other than penetrative sex. Carry on, because I think it's really interesting. I yeah. just couldn't resist yeah. saying the ass, because that is an area you can't penetrate if the front bum's <laughs> no, broken. But, no, but just a lot of the time <laughs> the they're simultaneously broken. broken. Well, they're simul- I know they can get simultaneously broken, but I was yeah. going to say that one That's was, tough you know, lines. That's tough that lines. That's hard lines. That's hard lines. That's hard In and around the mouth, that's that's penetration. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) exactly. This is going somewhere else. I think we've wrapped up this question. No, no, Um, we haven't. haven't. What else are you saying? Were you saying more like erogenous zones and massage and intimacy and kissing? Is that what you were saying? Yeah. All of that, all of that is really important. And communication. And like, there's this thing, right, called vulva gazing. (laughs) Which yeah. don't lower. No, I wasn't. I just was surprised you're bringing that one out. But no, I like it. because I like this it. is fucking brilliant. This is great. Vulva gazing, right? James has lost it. Can you please have a conversation about this? I'm a vulva gazer. <laughs> Yeah. I'm always out in the car. Chloe always catches me. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm just vulva gazing, babe. What, at the end of the bed? At the end of the bed, yeah. We're very, we're telling um, just tell sorry, me what it is. Aaron, what is vulva gazing? Stop being vulva gazing. Vulva gazing is as it says on the tin. So basically you would, um, with your partner, if you were in a heterosexual couple, you would lie down in front of each other, you would open your legs and you would <laughs> gaze at your partner's vagina, right? And this brings, so the first couple of minutes for the woman is like bang, 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 heart pumping, adrenaline pumping, it's fucking yeah. scary, you start sweating, da-da. and after that you go into a completely different state where all of your senses start to become really enjoyable you start to get into a really erotic zone with your partner yeah. and then that can lead on to other things vulva gazing is the first thing you should try if you're struggling to have sex and, and i love one that more, that's one so more. female oh, that's such a female thing to do to that is put a somebody yeah. in a situation and it's something you never think of isn't it but no we, we, i think did... like it oh. it really would a get your mind going and b after the initial fear the safety, and I think women, men don't realise that women need to feel this to be really that that this is such a wanky sentence, no pun intended, but they're most sexually free selves. We have to feel safe. So yeah. what would happen then? I mean, oh my God, what brilliant advice. Go on, Zoe. Yeah. And the, the other thing that we, uh, and we tried a little bit, wasn't it, was... Um... Two, like we we used to ban we, we used to basically just say two two minutes every night we would kiss and nothing else nothing more see where, where you know whatever it was and we'd start and you'd be like and those two minute kisses honestly genuinely were just incredible weren't they and yeah. like honestly it was a hundred percent strike rate it was just <laughs> incredible it was it was just like start yep. kissing keep going beautiful like really getting into it kissing 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 oh, kissing, kissing, snogging. kissing snogging it's so snogging. it's so important and like it's i it's the as a woman it's ah oh, you too as a woman it's one of the things that is um to me like one of the things that leads into having great sex is the kissing and like there have been times where you've been like oh, i don't want to kiss and i'm like no <laughs> like, no, no, it was I'm only when really I was steamy and I was doing a little role play or something in my mind. And all, I'm a massive kisser. Like my my whole, you know, I, I would d- dump someone when I was single if they weren't a good kisser. Kissing for me yeah. is like hugely yeah, important. Yeah, big, it's big a really friend. intimate thing. You know, I really enjoy it. I would do it throughout sex, whatever. Um, so I think, yeah, for me, it's a very important thing. It's interesting because we had Emma Sale on the podcast who obviously you guys her. met at the party. And Emma's brilliant, obviously, you know, trying to liberate kind of, uh, f- you know, f- female uh, females in terms of sex and everything else. What was really interesting, she said quite similar to what you both have said about 
and maybe this is advice for this guy is, is that, you know, the little texting, we spend a lot of time on our phone, perhaps just sending a message going, I saw you today, I thought you looked beautiful, I thought your bum was looking great. Um, and maybe, you know, like you said, taking that time and building that rapport. Um, so the, constantly throughout the day, she's getting that kind of affirmation, getting that, that, that confidence. And I think also, sometimes in these situations, the communication about actually sitting down and saying, look, yeah. this is this has become a problem because someone was telling me the other day, actually, I don't know, I think, I, I don't know the exact figures and I apologize, but something like not having sex, you know, uh, you know, every four months is, is, is described as a sexless marriage. Like if you, you know, if you, even if you have sex like twice a year, that is a sexless marriage in, t- in the way that the, yes. the, 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 yeah, the yeah, people yeah. talk about it um, in, 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 in terms. And so I think it's really important that even just when the, having a moment, maybe going out to dinner, taking her out to dinner and just saying, listen, you know, this is really important to me. You know, we, we've, you know, we, we used to have an amazing sex, you know, relationship, sexual relationship. This is dissipated. How can we get back into it? What do you need? And she's, you know, she's like, I, I, I'm not, I don't care about, I, I, I'm not confident in my body. That is fine. But how can we actually make the you feel better? The trick is as well, I think women saying to a man, I don't feel confident in my body, then makes men feel, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know that. It's a hard thing to say to to your male partner because I think a lot of men find it quite a turn off. Yeah. If you're not like, I don't care, like fuck me anyway. I yeah. think I think it's a really sticky situation. But I think Zoe, right back to what you said, and I my best friend is a sex therapist, so I know this and I've known this for years that the re- the really big important thing to do is to get back on the horse and start having sex again because it's, it, if you can get that momentum going again, even if, even if it might be a bit, you know awful at times um once the ball is rolling oh my god does it get easier um i think that's great yeah. advice and you've got to start with talking i think that's like the communication like you said james is absolutely key it's amazing that you can have children with somebody you know have a mortgage book holidays but you can't sit down and talk about the most personal thing for both of you so if you can take away the shame and even starting it with something like oh we used to have this really great sex life that sets them up to feel like oh well, we don't have a great sex life anymore so forget about what's happened in the past and how can you go forward as as a couple that and, would be my advice when are we going to get our slot on this morning for the couple's counseling i know, counseling? I know. And, and, oh my god and also and also the, the, the thing that i would say is that obviously there are there are physical huge physical changes that you go through by having kids, and look, that's not necessarily a turn off to me. Like I'm not expecting uh, a, a sort of a, a, a pre kid Zoe's body, if that makes yeah. sense. And like yeah. that it, that is a turn on to me. Like that has given me everything, and I love that, and I'm uh, it's sexy to me. So I don't. It's I not something to that. be ashamed of, and I, and I think I honestly think that. Um, you know, those insecurities can really be worked out by discussing them because, look, I, find, I, I, I love all everything around it and everything to do with it. So it's, so it's very saying, easy for me so to say if that. I know that if I said to James, I'm feeling really insecure about my body, he would be like, Ugh. but if Zoe came to you and said, I'm feeling really insecure about my body, how would you respond to that? Um, I would say, why? Tell me, what 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 are you feeling insecure about? On? And then I would I wouldn't rubbish it or I wouldn't get rid of it because look, you know what it's like when you're insecure about something. It's like I, I'm insecure about my hair, right? You know, and I say, oh, my hair's shit or it's falling out. People go, you've got your hair's great, but I know in my mind, you know, it's how I perceive it. So it's it's yeah. kind of very personal those insecurities, and it's not about me saying, oh no, you shouldn't have those or no, don't have them because. You do have them and you have them for those reasons. It's about saying, well, what what can we do to try and make them better? Like, I I, I really don't see that. I don't agree with you, but, you know, let's talk it out or yeah. let's do this yeah. or let's or say that or let's talk about it. what can you do that would make you feel better? Because exactly. as you say, a lot of the time it comes from you. It's, it's not within, about anyone And it's else. within you've got to yeah. satisfy. It's not it's not about what I feel about it because I think Zoe's the most beautiful woman in the world. But that's not, that's not what we're talking that. about. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. Don't tell that's, everybody that's what, what happened talking. on Sunday. So <laughs> was putting on her bikini. She had no idea who just opened the bathroom door. <laughs> she was actually like bending over, pulling up her bikini once. And I went, oh, and she was like, it's fine. Don't worry. You have like, first of all, you have the self-confidence of, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't presume to know, but you have the self-confidence that every woman would die for, but you also have the goods to back it up. And I wonder if you work on that yourself. Do you work on your self-confidence? Yeah, I, I, you, I think you have to when you become a, um, a parent and, and a mother, because I think what was happening to me was I was, and I'm, I'm sure lots of people can relate to this. The minute your eyes are like prized open in the morning, you're giving to your children. You're mm. giving, 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 giving. So I actually yeah. did some some really amazing like um, 
uh, affirmation work and I did a healing session and some meditation with an amazing healer called Caroline Britton who basically told me that in the mornings I've got to set my my myself up in a bubble so that I leave something of me for me they can't have everything and I think we forget that as parents we're sort of programmed to give them absolutely everything yeah, yeah. And, and and I think you've, we, we try to yeah. keep them out of our bed as best we can because yeah. that is our space yeah. and we try to sort of <laughs> smart that's definitely our yeah, space thank God for that thank God for that because that's the very few things that we have for ourselves yeah. Isn't it? yeah and and we also try and say right at a certain time at night you're going to bed and we work really hard on our you know getting them to bed which with three is hard work yeah um yeah. And and we say, right, this is now our time to come down and not be mum and dad, it's to be Dozer and Zoe and to like open a glass of wine, look each other's in the eyes. And sometimes that's all you get. Sometimes that is all you get, that little 10 seconds because we're absolutely goose. And just be like, have a little kiss. And a, whether it's a two minute one, you might get in. Or if it's a 10 second one and <laughs> you might not get in. <laughs> that's, but that's it's, fine. Just, it's very important. Go on, Jane. Go on. I, I am interested because this is something my mum always um, told me. She said, when, you know, when sometimes people have kids, because the kids become the sole focus, they actually neglect the other relationships around them. For example, exactly. you forget that you're, for, as, a, as a woman, that your husband, and obviously vice versa, but your husband needs some attention too. Zoe, what do you, and you kind of talked about it, but do you, is there any tricks to doing that? So you sort of, because you have so much love for your kids and they take so much from you. How do you keep things, you know, with dogs? Do you, how do you check in? How do you keep the big man happy in, in, in <laughs> In, in certain ways. Um, so my top tip actually is if you have been in charge of your kids all day and looking after them, this is for you know fathers and for mothers, is once you've got them in bed before you've come back downstairs is go into the bathroom and have a shower, right? You on your own, just go in, have a shower, get out of the clothes that you've been wearing looking after them all day and just change into something clean. It doesn't have to be something sexy, but you're almost washing away your parenting fucking demons. And you're like, whatever sort of day you've had, you can have 10 minutes in the shower to yourself to be like, I'm fucking not a mother right now. I'm just me. And when I'm going to come downstairs, I might be knackered, but at least I'm going to feel fresher. And I can come and talk to my, to my husband. I think at that point, there's definitely times where I have to communicate with Doz that I don't necessarily feel particularly healthy it's like <laughs> I'm tired or yeah. like I'm feeling a bit shit and he's really understanding and vice versa and I think we check in I've what we have is great communication yes we talk I a lot. And you, 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 you work on that and you, you both have to you, how did you get into the good communication because I think some some couples I forced really you into it I forced <laughs> you no, into no, it as I said earlier uh, at the top of the top of the program it's like it was something that it really wasn't natural to me and still doesn't really come nat naturally to me you know James we took we spoke yesterday about this kind of alpha male persona that we both had as professional sportsmen where it's like anything we did you know, we tackle it head on. It's like, how are you, Dos? Yet yeah, fucking great. Even when you were at the, in the bottom of the world. And, and you, you've used the analogies, James, where we used to have to sign in and do all these wellness forms. And it didn't matter what number you put in, you still did exactly the same thing. So look, communication was something that really didn't come naturally to me. But Zoe's gift, and it is honestly her best gift, is making me talk and sometimes yeah. i fucking hate it because i'm like oh she's gonna she's gonna keep pulling at this and sometimes it's really hard for me but i've grown so much Sorry. from it and actually as a person it's given no, it's me important. so much it's given me so much and it's given us so much because i am able to converse at a level where what used to get me angry now gives me the kind of the ability to work my way out of it and kind of go i see your point or i don't see your point and there's little strategies and things and Look, it's never a finished article, is it? And, it no. and and sometimes you wake up on a day and you don't want to fucking communicate. And, you and I leave him alone then. Like I have learned because I'm yeah. a bit of a Rottweiler with emotions. I, if something's not quite right, I'm like, but tell me, what's wrong? You okay? Yeah. You okay? I'm like you that okay? too, yeah, yeah. It's taken me six years now to just go... Nope. Okay. He doesn't want to talk. I'm going to walk away. You're this the Rottweiler. We... Chloe's the woodpecker. Yeah, this is where we struggle. <laughs> like, James gets really, really angry if I try and get him to communicate something difficult with me. But then I'm like that. I'm like, well, what the fuck is wrong? Like, talk to me. And that makes him more angry. And round and round we go, as you guys know, because we've had this conversation a million <laughs> times in our friendship group. But, I, but it's really amazing to me actually just watching, you know, Zoe, you are, it is your gift. And it obviously is very natural to you but Doris what's amazing is 
I was always of the opinion like people don't change, people don't change. I have literally watched you change. And now some of the best conversations I have on a night out are with you. And if you fucking told me that six years ago, I would have laughed in your face and been like, no, that's not true. But I wake up next day and I had, oh, I had a great chat with Doz last night. And James is like behind the DJ decks with his yeah, headphones every on, time, not interested. Every time they try to get deep, I just put earphones back on and change the song. What yeah. was that? Fade that out. So yeah, I can't yeah, hear yeah. you, baby. Oh, but credit, credit to minute. you both. Because Zoe, you made that happen, and Doz, yeah, but you there's, there's, there's went also with it. there's a there's a, there's a thing that I read in a book recently. I was talking to James about it's um, men are from Venus and women are from Mars. Yeah. Or it's yeah. a well known book, and yeah. in it it says that when you argue, look, every relationship you argue, and it's a healthy thing to have the argument. But what normally transpires is that you end up making the enemy your partner as opposed to the problem the enemy if that makes sense mm. because the way you communicate Preach. with your partner you shout or you swear or you say something and the the argument pivots away from what the actual problem is into yeah. well you just said this or you said that yeah. or oh my god how could you speak to me like that and it's like you say things it's especially as a man you say things in the heat of the moment as a throwaway comment and that doesn't necessarily it doesn't get taken as a throwaway comment but yeah. re- the skill in that is to say is to try to retain the problem as the enemy and if you can do that even two times you're not going to be able to do it every time of course you're not you, you know but if you can do it a couple of times out of you know I don't know you're on top of so Just one that's the skill well that is the skill together. Up, it yeah. can be our book I puzzle. downloaded the audio book yesterday okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I have to be the audio I got it in I was like, like, like ah, the fucking book. I should be on commission <laughs> well listen gang thank you so much for your time today uh, I think it's really amazing to get um, honest kind of tips from a couple who have been through it and are going through it. Actual couple goals. Everyone who sends that to James and I, trust, trust me, we're not, we're children. These two are couple goals. If you want Can I just say that we fight as well? Can I say that we do fight? <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. fucking absolute idiots sometimes, innit? And we're not fucking perfect or smug Well, you're about human. It. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely not smug about it. No. <laughs> if, um, <laughs> if Zoe, you've obviously got a podcast. Do you want to tell everyone where to listen to it and what the name of it is? Uh, yes, it's called Made by Mummers. I do it with uh, my business partner and my, my best mate, Georgia Dayton. And you can find it wherever you get your podcast, basically. And it's a, it's a parenting podcast. And it's you're really on Instagram as well, Zoe. What's your Instagram handle if anyone wants to follow you? Have a purse. Yeah, at Zoe Harper. Bit of vulva gazing. <laughs> at Made by Mummers. There'll be some vulva gazing. Give Paul a follow on Instagram. And um, what, what, is your, what is your Instagram for people to follow? To, to... Uh, at Paul Doran Jones, I think. But he's not on it at the moment because we're vulva gazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and we've actually seen the real thing there. Zoe is operating Paul like a puppet with his hand up his ass. <laughs> but thank you very much, everything said Zoe. I mean, said Paul. Um, well, I'm uh, I've been Jace Haskell. You've been and Chloe Maidley. This has been Couples Quarantine. If you like it, please share, please subscribe. Uh, we'll be back next week. It will just be me and Chloe. We're going to have some more guests. Paul, Zoe, you've been amazing. Yes. Big love to you, love and you we'll catch you both soon. Thank you so bye, much. Bye, love guys. you both. Love you both. Love you both.